I've realized recently how beneficial patience would have been in my life if I'd had more of it, if I'd been more patient. Um, and I've been thinking about it a lot. And because I think a lot about like gratitude and things like this, you know, in an effort to try and improve my life and be a better person and, you know, all of these things. And recently I've been thinking like, we, we t- generally we talk a lot about like gratitude, you know, or people do, but I think patience is equally important. Um, and I, I can think of so many things that have happened in my life where I guess impatience um, has undermined things I've attempted to do or achieve and also taken me so much out of the present that it's caused me to effectively have a lack of gratitude because I've been impatiently waiting for the next thing. So I haven't been able to appreciate what's happening now. Um, From going way back, you know, to when I was a kid. And I realised, like... If if you can learn patience as a kid, for example, I think you're just you you can just do anything. Like I think if you can if you could instill patience in like a ten year old, like that kid could accomplish so much in their life because I think it's probably one of the biggest limiting factors in life is is impatience. Um, there are a lot of issues people have that you can you can link to impatience i mean even a lot of the sort of you know like modern problems we talk about uh like phone addiction social media addiction things like this a lot of them you you could look at from the angle of impatience like you can't wait for long-term gratification you can't wait for something more fulfilling and rewarding to do so you just go on your phone i do it all the time i just look on my phone i look at crap it doesn't it makes me bored really but in the short term it feels better than doing nothing so uh, i do it and i'm not being uh, i'm being impatient i'm not waiting for you know like some sort of more rewarding or meaningful thing um but yeah when i think back to being a kid i remember like well one of the first experiences i had with it was i was like really uh i was like a really late developer when i was a kid i i, I went through puberty like really late and admittedly, that is really difficult. I wasn't. I wouldn't say per se I was being impatient to a fault. Like, it was understandable that I was impatient because it's, it's super embarrassing and like, um, quite. Uh, I don't know. Like, quite psychologically taxing, I guess, as a male. Like to go through that is quite, um, quite humiliating and and just uh, disabling in some ways. You know, because you can't really engage with life in the same way that other people your age can you know you're sort of kept at a different level to other people and uh that is frustrating and inevitably uh, most kids will f- would feel impatient in that situation right or would be you know unhappy about it so it's understandable but um i guess that was that was probably aside from typical childhood impatience you know like oh i want to have this new thing i want to do this or that and you know that that's kind of standard like you know kids want like new toys or whatever or new games they want they can't wait till christmas blah 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 and it's all a bit sad and uh materialistic and kind of depressing to remember that aspect of childhood but it's relatively normal and in our current consumer capitalist environment it's quite hard to avoid but in terms of for the larger issues like this thing i was going through as a kid when i was like a very late developer um, I all I could th- it, was, it was all I could think about basically like all I could think about was like man I just want to like just like grow some pubes basically like <laughs> I just want to like you know grow up like I want to I want to um, look my age I want to be my age I want to be like taller I want to you know whatever I just really really wanted to to grow up faster and I felt like my life in the interim had no real meaning or purpose or value and that it was all just a waste of time and I just I mean I used to like try and research it on the internet I looked into like growth hormone therapy and stuff which was crazy um obviously my I looked into this independently you know I mentioned it to my mum and she was like that's crazy um but I was like really really impatient about it and used to look up all these statistics and 
information and stuff and it really like you know made me quite upset and anyway like I I wasted a lot of that time and had I known like look you know you'll you'll go through puberty eventually like it's just taking a while um in the meantime work with what you have do what you can and, and accept that that's coming it's in the pipeline it's on its way you will get that and don't squander what you have now um in the meantime because I was still capable of learning social skills I was still capable of learning like motor skills learning sports martial arts hobbies you know musical instruments whatever like I was capable of doing all of these things but I didn't care because my sole focus was on this thing that I was waiting for which I wanted which was inevitably in the future to some degree it wasn't going to happen overnight like that that was a, a failed attempt at snapping my fingers um which was it's something else I also developed very late in life, actually, the ability to snap my fingers. I'm still not 100% confident in doing it. Um, but that was something that was, that was it was in, it always necessarily going to be in the future, even if it was in the, in the near future and it was going to begin suddenly, you know, like it wasn't going to happen when I wanted it to, which was now. And, um, and like with many of these things that you wait for and that you want and everything else, they kind of happen without you really thinking about it or noticing it and like sort of like how a watched pot never boils as the saying goes like you just kind of one day you go oh yeah that problem's kind of over I don't really think about that anymore and I wasted all that time thinking about it and worrying about it and feeling bad and wasting what was in front of me um and so then concurrently with this and as I got older, as I started to like, you know, like develop more and everything, but also when I wasn't, you know, as I say, concurrently from the age of like, from secondary school onwards. So that would be like 11 onwards. I was like obsessed with girls. Like I was just like, and I think the two fed into one another, like, um, because although I wasn't like, uh, I wasn't developing, I was still very interested in girls. I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't, it didn't it didn't prevent that basically um and i think they fed into one another because there was this anxiety this discomfort like girls look at me like i'm like a baby you know and i felt very like i just i really wanted like in retrospect validation but also i just wanted girlfriends and whatever you know um and uh and i became like extremely impatient about that as well and you know that continued throughout life like but I became like instead of going like okay I'm I'm not going to get a girlfriend now probably if I do it's not going to be like someone that I particularly want to go out with and I'm realistically I'm just not going to have a girlfriend and you know girls are just not interested in me at this point so I have all of this time because, you know, <laughs> there's plenty of people who don't, like, have any, don't even, like, kiss a woman until they're, like, you know, in their mid-20s or whatever. And plenty of them these days are, like, perfectly normal. Like, it's not that unusual even these days. Um, and, you know, certainly when you're, when you're 12, there's really not a hurry. There is really no hurry. The only hurry is you feel bad about something and you feel the only way to rectify it is to get what you want, to get whatever it is that's, that the lack of has made you feel bad and you don't realise that you're making yourself feel bad and that really the problem is inside you. Um, and so I I had all this time and I could have worked on myself, I could have become more sociable, I could have learned skills, I could have dedicated myself to something I could have gotten fitter, you know, done more sports. I could have just relaxed and had fun, just worked on being happy, being a fun person. I could have studied more um, and then I wouldn't have been like in trouble all the time and like in detention every day. I could have done so many things. I could even have just, you know, spent more time with my, well, probably not actually, (laughs) with my family, (laughs) maybe. Um... But, you know, I I could have done a lot of things, basically, with that time, and I didn't. I spent all of it worrying and obsessing over stuff that I couldn't really control and, like, trying to speak to girls on, like, MSN, you know, and, like, I was sort of... 
in avoidance of the fact that I basically looked about four years younger than I was, which at that age is like a big gap, and like not showing pictures of myself and like somehow trying to get this thing that I was looking for that was sort of impossible to have. And instead of just letting go and going, probably I'll have a girlfriend at some point by the time I'm like 20 and that's okay and, you know, it's not a big deal and I don't need to waste my time obsessing over this thing. So, yeah, you can look at this from the perspective of gratitude, like I should have been more grateful for what I had. But I think in that case, patience probably would have been more applicable. Being patient would have been more relevant to my situation because... You don't have a lot of things when you're when you're a kid. It's not you don't really have th- I know you have things like of course, but you know when you get older you're like, "Oh, I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my work. I'm grateful for the, all these you sort of have control over your own life. When you're a kid, you don't really like own things and you don't really have relationships apart from the ones that are just given to you. It's like these are your parents and do what they fucking say. You don't be like, I'm so grateful for my wonderful parents. Like, you know, it's just it would be weird. I think gratitude is more of a grown up concept. Um not to say it doesn't have a application for kids, but like I I do think it's more of a grown up an adult concept when you start to have your own things and you know, there are when you get older there are you have some things that you want and then there are a lot of things you want that you don't have, but gratitude of the thing and and you also know when you're older you can lose things more like you you don't lose things as much when you're a kid unless you're very unfortunate like you don't lose as many things but when you're older you know like you can have financial ruin your loved ones will die um you know you you might break up with your partner it's just it's just i feel like it's more of a grown-up concept but whatever I, i think it's useful for everybody but yeah this patience anyway this or this this lack of patience this impatience that i had um that I think that that what in this context appears like a, ch- a childlike form of impatience that I'm describing, and I was a child, but I carried that through adulthood uh, completely. The um, the wanting girlfriends and stuff. I mean, that ha- when I was like a teenager and everything, that was the same. I was very instead of just t- being centered and taking a moment and going, all right, like there's not really a hurry here. It's better to be in the right situation and find the right person and be work on myself and everything and not kind of stress about like getting something now and like I have to fix this feeling now with this outcome and this outcome is the only thing that can fix this feeling um and uh but I yeah I I continued with that same pattern and then when I started trying to achieve things in music, I see that the exact same impatience just uh, ruined everything for me, to be honest. Like, it was like, um, I could, I needed every, I, I felt like it was wrong that I wasn't successful and I needed to rectify it like that day. Like, I had to fix it that day. I had to like, like, this has to change now. Instead of going okay, it might be 10 years, because if, if I'd known, I was, I had no idea, like, you know, that I would be at the stage I'm at now, like, after, like, 10 years or so of doing music, I had no idea it would be, I thought I'd be much more successful, and had I known that, I could have made a much better fist of it, you know, but I was like, no, 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 this is all wrong, this has to be fixed, like, tomorrow, I have to do something today that changes this tomorrow which sounds like an inspirational slogan or something but in this context of impatience it's not like I should have been thinking this might be 10 years might be 20 years I need to I I need to live in the reality that I'm in which is that this is like a long-term thing a long-term process and it's not something I can rush and it's not something I can I can I can I take unnecessary risks and jeopardize myself and my future by trying to rectify what I perceive as being um, some kind of wrong that I'm that I'm not getting what I want now. You know, uh, with all of that stuff, I didn't realize at the time that I was being impatient. I didn't think that I was doing anything to hinder my own quality of life I just thought like 
it was a natural response to how I was feeling. So it's it's made me think recently, when I look back and see it all, it's made me think like, well, what am I doing now that's like that, you know? Um, like you ever heard that feeling when you're a kid, when you're, when you're like 12, you remember stuff you did when you were 10 and you feel really embarrassed and you're like, oh, I must be doing that now because then you become like 14 and you remember stuff you did when you were 12 and you're really embarrassed and you're like I guess I'm still doing that like every couple of years I'm uh, right now I'm still doing all of these things that I'm going to look at in like two years and be like really embarrassed by and that kind of continues to a lesser extent like even when I remember being 25 or whatever like I still cringe at some of it not it's not to the same extent um the the difference the age differences kind of you know become smaller over time but um now more so I look back and I think well if I was really impatient then and it was hindering my quality of life and it was hindering my potential and holding me back and making me unnecessarily stressed out and unhappy or not a good person then maybe I'm doing that now maybe a lot of the things I think about now are I'm being equally impatient about and like I should uh, it's a, it's a good reminder, I guess, like looking at the things you've done wrong in the past or you've approached incorrectly in the past. Um, it's quite likely that they haven't fully changed now. So I look at it now a lot because there's a lot of things that I I think about the future a lot, you know, like, and it's less desperate. It's less, it's not like I was when I was like 12 and really trying to like, you know, like grow up faster than I was able to. But think about like, where I'll live, having kids, like money stuff, and I'd like to have this, I'd like to have that, I'd like life to be like this, and I think about it a lot, and I think like to some degree that's the same quality like of impatience, like I'm thinking, oh, like I can't wait to have this, I can't wait to have that, and in reality, like I'll probably get a lot of these things that I'm thinking about, and I shouldn't really waste too much time thinking about them now, because those are for the future, and the, these the things I have now are in the present, you know, and like I think a lot about having kids, having a family, and I I don't have one now, so I shouldn't really be thinking about it too much because I should be living the life that I have now, which is good. It's good that I don't that I you know I, I there's a lot of there's a lot of benefits to not having a family. There's a lot of advantages, and I should be kind of thinking about those. I shouldn't really be thinking about some a situation that I'm not in yet all the time it's a it's a waste of time and it's a waste of the situation I'm in now of course it's good to like plan and everything and to want things but it, it can be excessive so I think about that a lot now and even with smaller things really dumb stuff um and I don't know if this is a, just impatience I think maybe I have like a slightly obsessive mindset which I think ties in with impatience. Like it's been suggested I have OCD and like, I don't think I, I don't know. I've had a lot of obsessive tendencies over the years on like even um, weird stuff in my head. Like, uh, uh, you know, and there's like things you feel like you have to do like weird, like, like I used to do all these weird counting things in my head when I was a kid or doing these things with numbers or like tiles and like weird stuff. And I know lots of people do little things like that, but like I do it quite a lot. And like, I guess have a tendency for my mind to get like locked into the thing. I don't think it it qualifies as OCD, but certainly quite obsessive compulsive tendencies I've had over the years. And um sometimes there'll be something like as a new piece of like equipment I want to buy, like a new piece of and it's like really dumb stuff. I remember there was one a while ago. And it depressed me. What was it? It was uh it wasn't a pull-up bar. It was something less than that. It was it's like dumb shit. Yeah, like I think it was a foam roller. I decided I was going to buy a foam roller. And there was a shop that was like a 45 minute to an hour walk away. And I was going to buy one from there. And we were going to go in like a week. I remember I spent the whole week thinking about how good it was going to be when I had a foam roller. And I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I was thinking about it like all the time. And I was getting this, all this like excitement in me about having a foam roller, like, which is ridiculous. And then we, uh, a foam roller is like a thing you roll on, like to like, to like, uh, a, ease like muscle tension and stuff you know it's like in 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 lieu of getting like a sports massage you'd use a foam roller on yourself and I remember on the way there I was like I was getting all like buzzed for it 
And I was like, yeah, the foam roller, the foam roller. Once I have the foam roller, everything's sorted. I just need to get the foam roller. And then halfway there, I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, it's a foam roller. Why? Like, why am I thinking about this to this extent? What? It's just, just it means nothing. It's, it's a fucking pointless object. Like, it's not pointless. It has a purpose. But it's not significant in my life. And you know this was like a week of time of like working and doing things and you know existing there was a lot more than going on than a foam roller like it wasn't an important thing I couldn't stop thinking about it and then I, I got it I don't use it like I've used it like four times it's like kind of annoying to use I don't really care about it and it's just not something I really need that much and I spent like a week just thinking about it obsessively and with small items and things that are happening like you're going to go on a trip in a week or someone's coming to visit in a few days or you're going to like go to a restaurant tonight or you're going to and I feel like it's easy to put your life on hold until you get those things um so it can be it can be a kind of um uh a sort of obsessive like materialistic thing as well um and uh, I think everybody does that to some extent. Maybe maybe thinking about a foam roller for a week is like not normal, and maybe that's more me. But I think everybody does this to an extent. Like people look forward to things that don't aren't really. Um, people do it with like weddings and stuff, you know, and like weird things that don't really do anything. Like they don't. They do, they're, they're not. They're not important things. They're not. They're not really going to change. It, and you attach so much to them, um, but in some ways that's a separate issue. You know, all the all the emotional investment we put in these outcomes, uh, that's not something that's strictly linked to impatience. That's something that is also just can just be unhealthy. Full stop. Um, anyway, yeah. So there's that. There's the there's the emotional side of it. There's the way that you interpret things and and think about them and feel about them and then also there's a thing a strategy I've like employed I guess over the years um which is a bit different it's more like a conscious waiting I guess like just or just sort of deciding to wait deciding to do nothing uh which perhaps is kind of a separate topic for a separate video but I feel I'll just whack it on here because I feel it's relevant anyway but certain things happen um and it feels like there's a a need to react to them because naturally when things happen especially if something bad happens it feels like you have to react right like something big happens in your life or someone does something to you or like someone screws you over or something and it feels like you have to react particularly i guess with human to human situations if you're like humiliated in some way or you're um or something upsets you or something happens in interacting with people or a person or something uh you feel like you have to do something about it you feel like you have to react and a thing i've found really useful recently not recently actually like i've done this for a long time sometimes i don't usually do it but 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 the times i've done it it's really paid off it's just um doing nothing like just just going okay and just waiting and doing nothing and sort of thinking like time will tell you know that's okay for now fine like let's just wait and see let's let's wait and see like because it doesn't always work i don't believe like you know karma balances everything out certainly not in this lifetime assuming there are other lifetimes beyond this perhaps but i don't really believe that in this current you know lifetime we're living that karma balances everything out because there are really bad people who do I mean Jimmy Savile right like he died before anyone accused him of anything and he was rich and he did all these horrible things that he wanted to do and the victims suffered and there was no karma there people say oh yeah karma will catch up to him it didn't catch up to him maybe in his mind in some way it did in his soul but it didn't catch up to him he got away with it Uh, and lots of bad people get away with lots of bad things even on a lower level than that like just you know i'm sure most people can think of someone they know who's like kind of like a shitty arrogant person who isn't particularly nice and is a bit up their own ass and everybody kind of likes them and everyone is nice to them 
And then there's people who are misunderstood, who are not, who are quite g- decent people, but they don't get very far in the world. They fail a lot. They don't do well socially, they, you know, whatever. Um, so I don't really buy all of that. But I think in certain respects, the universe or life, just reality, has a lot of like checks and balances and often in many ways has ways of balancing itself out and moreover uh, things are often put back in their place things that come out of place often end up put back in their place like when you when you um, if a, a, you have a herniated disc over time your body kind of reabsorbs that disc and pushes it back in um, and I think some life events are kind of like that, like certain things that are wrong, that aren't where they should be or don't happen the way that they should happen, can kind of end up put back into place. Um, so there are certain situations where some of them I can't talk about, but there are certain situations where I felt very bad about things that people have done. Very hurt, you know? And... You go through this thing, you know, you're holding on to this thing and you're like, what the fuck am I going to do? Like, what am I going to say? How am I going to fucking, like, win this situation? How am I going to... And then a few times I've had this clarity where I've just gone like, no, just just do nothing. Like, just leave it. Just be like, okay, we'll see. Give it 10 years. Like, let's see what's happening in 10 years, you know? Um, I'm going to just get back on with focusing on the things that are within my control and I'll let you do your thing and we'll see. And most of the time when that happens, I look back and I feel quite good about that decision, I would say. And I think that by removing yourself from something like that emotionally, um, you feel... uh, often very vindicated like not always as I say some people are pricks and get away with it their whole lives but a lot of the time um people who are people who often I guess um doing bad things can be a a punishment in and of itself and also if you're a good person you focus on doing things the right way and you focus on like you will end up in many cases kind of like vindicated by life um it, so hard to explain my uh my girlfriend is going through it now she has a very bad family situation basically like very bad like terrible um and for her it's difficult because these things happen that are so bad and painful and humiliating and there's these there's th- people say things and there's these narratives created and there's this, this, this good, just gr- gro- horrible, horrible things and there's a part of you wants to like grab it and control it and fix it and fight it and do all of this and, I, and you know, we've been through all of that and like, we went through that for years and it never worked, it never accomplished anything and lately I've been like, just like, just let them do whatever they're going to do you can't really it's been made clear that you can't stop them you it's been made clear that you can't really affect how they're going to look at things and how more importantly how they're going to behave they don't care um so just like kind of just wait and see like and and we're still in that process a little bit of like kind of like certain things can't be fought certain things can't be controlled or fixed um but a lot of the time you'll look back in 10 years and go well I got myself out of that like ugly toxicity and that person stayed in it and so you're you're here you're in you're in uh in the mud with someone and it feels like they're winning because you're in the mud with them and they're on top of you and you're both covered in mud but your face is in the mud and they're holding you down in it and you feel like shit and you can try and fight them in the mud you can try and get into like a fucking mud wrestling match and put their face in the mud and or 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 stop them from putting yours in the mud and you know put your hand up and defend yourself and you can you know or you can go okay 
you you're the winner you're the king of the mud you win in the mud and i'm going to go over here to where it's clean and like slowly kind of get this off me i'm probably not gonna be able to jump in a shower and instantly clean all of this mud off me in this in this metaphor but over time you know the mud will start to dry and i'll be able to to wipe it off it will it will start to kind of fall away and I'll take my time, I'll be patient with it, and I'm going to kind of get over here where it's clean and focus on other things and leave you to your victory over there, and we'll see. And you look back in 10 years, 5 years, 10 years, whenever, that person is still in the mud. They're rolling around with someone else, or they're on their own cheering about how they, you know, celebrating this victory they had in the mud, and they're covered in it, and it's all over them. And... If they're on their knees and you're just kind of over here by this point you're like clean and you know healthier and you're sort of looking at them and just feeling a bit if anything a bit sorry for them or just thinking I can't believe I stayed in that mud with them for that long I can't believe I stayed in that situation I can't believe I allowed that to be I can't believe I let that be my world and let that affect me when I could have just been over here and just just kind of uh, moved on from it, moved away from it. Yeah, in general, um, in these uh, situations where it feels like things are wrong, it feels like you kind of, uh, you want things to change, like it feels like things should maybe be different or whatever. I think A, sometimes just having patience in yourself and knowing like these things are probably going to come and there's no point like ruining what's going on now and b as i say sometimes in in certain situations kind of strategically waiting and doing nothing and allowing things to play out on their own and removing yourself from situations that are potentially um bad and i guess i guess all of this could be (sighs) summarized by saying like uh life is a long you know life takes place over 80 90 100 years not not two months not a day not two years like it's a you're in life for the long haul um and it's much better to think of it like that like to it's like with working out if you go to the gym and you're like i need to get fit now like i need to fucking burn all this fat and build loads of muscle and like just absolutely destroy my biceps like you go to the gym and you just fuck yourself up like you'll just have an injury or you'll be exhausted from your workout you'll look insane and you'll be exhausted you won't want to go again because it will be so unpleasant um it can be fun to work out with high intensity but you know what i mean for the purpose of this analogy or whatever you you you, it's not particularly sustainable to go in thinking in a a short-term mindset whereas if you're like okay this will take me like you know a few years to get in shape and let's figure out how i'm going to do that you're going to have much better results so similarly in life by accepting that most of the things that have meaning in life are more like long-term things and that you're in life for the long haul it's much easier um to to get the things that you want basically um and you know, I wish I'd learned this earlier. Uh, people become, more, in some ways, more impatient as they get older because you have less and less time. But at the same time, I'm 31 now, 32 in a few days, and um, I have shit loads of time. Like, I have an obs- obscene amount of time in front of me. And so there's no point in being, like being like that falling into this like aging related sort of anxiety like and worrying i'll never do this i'll never have that i'll never have enough money i'll never blah blah blah. like i need to focus on on using what i do using the time i do have available to me which is a lot and using that in the correct way not not sort of mistakenly trying to make something impossible with an impossibly small amount of time in impossible circumstances to try and fix some sort of emotional problem I have in me. Um, So yeah, that's all. Uh, I get fucking exhausted doing these videos. Like, um, 
starting to get a little bit Joe Biden halfway through. I like, I can do videos and just talk. I don't have to plan anything and I don't have to pause or anything. Um, but then sometimes, once in a while, I start to like, I get, I get, uh, I get like on top of myself. Um, anyway, yeah, cool. I'm going to go maybe have a swim. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, yeah, take care.